Hey y'all, Scott here. You know, so many people ask me, where do you get all those games? Yeah, that'll do. This is a used video game. Could you tell? Video game users are disgusting. We have sticky chairs and eat without socks on. So why are video games one of the most prevalent mediums where used products get swapped around? Everybody buys used products from time to time. There's no reason not to. I mean, the guy may have licked it beforehand, but the bread's still good. But for as many used DVDs and books and CDs and clothes and razors you can find on eBay, Amazon, and thrift stores, why are used video games so much more immediately accepted? Yeah, we all buy used versions of these, but I hear so many people say, I bought used clothes, I didn't know that was possible. But video games have always been associated with secondhand buying. Of course you have some secondhand movie and music shops, but you kind of have to specifically look for them. Almost every place that sells video games sells used video games as well. I don't even remember ever getting a used movie or album as a kid, but video games, hell yeah, this one had gum in it. Why are used games so prevalent and and why won't this come off? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with how expensive video games have always been. Why buy a brand new video game for $60 when you could buy it used for 55 I can think of a few reasons. But see, you spend 20 hours with a game, and when you're done with it, you're generally done with it. Why not sell it and use that money to buy another game? See, most people, when they've had an experience, they're okay with letting it go to have more experiences. This isn't normal. But when a game changes hands a few times, it's bound to show some wear after a while. And because of that, there are loads of different species of used games. Firstly, we've got the lookalikes. Used games that look nearly indistinguishable from new games. The game case is spotless, everything's included, absolutely no problem What? So ever. You could eat off of these things. Then we've got the sloppy seconds, games that are generally all together. They look fine enough, but have some slight imperfections. The game case is starting to get chapped. Look at this, it looks dehydrated. There might be some crinkles here and there and some light stuff missing like the manual or any extra inserts. It looks like the last owner used it as a napkin, but it's inoffensive to own. You may get less job offers, but with games like these, who needs them? But looking at the small little imperfections in the game cases, that just makes you ask, how did it get this way? Especially with games that recently came out. You ever see a used copy of a game that released a month ago and it's already on its deathbed? Games just get these random hickeys sometimes. Like, this is my copy of Super Mario 3D World. I've owned it since launch, taking good care of it. It has this for some reason now. My copy of Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii? Not my copy of Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii! One day in 2011, I found it on the floor with this gash in the middle. I did patch it up with tape and thankfully it was in a spot I could cover up with black sharpie, but these two moments made me realize games are far more fragile than you may expect. Which is odd. Game companies know their products are handled by young children. Children. You'd think they'd use bulletproof paper or something. Because this is just the beginning of the end. Thirdly, there's the frauds. You see them at the store and think, oh, that's looking pretty good. Pull it off the shelf and weep. There's something wrong with my WarioWare. If the seller didn't have the original artwork for the game case, they may just print off their own. At least they're making an effort. Sometimes the print quality is actually pretty good and can be misleading. Sometimes I'll pick up a used game and it'll take a while for me to realize this is a lie. And then other times I ask, okay, so you made an effort, but you didn't? Some people use the lowest quality box art scans they can to print off their copy. Sometimes it's not even the official box art, they'll just use whatever pops up on Google first. You can make the argument, oh, they were in a rush. They didn't have time to find the highest quality box art. Then why print box art in the first place? I have a love-hate relationship with these. On one hand, it's good to see people care enough to print off high quality box art, but I don't want printed off box art, I want the real deal. I have a man to be and I won't be that with fake Luigi's Mansion. At least with the shitty box art printouts, I mean, it's beyond obvious it's fake, so there's no fool in here, but like we thought this looked okay. It's more fun to see the box art that's drawn on with Sharpie. It really puts you in the shoes of the last person who owned the game. Like, how did you lose the box art? You kept the case, you kept the disc, the manual. How do you lose the artwork? That almost seems like it's the hardest thing to lose. If the whole case was missing, I'd understand, but the artwork? You'd have to make a conscious decision to get rid of that. And then the stickers, oh God, the stickers. Every used game needs some kind of indication what its price is. It just so happens the only way to do that is to staple it on. Why are stickers on video game boxes the most powerful stickers of all time? Sure, you get the easy peel off ones, but those are few and far between. Most of the time, these things have melted to the plastic. They're impossible to tear off in one go. And even if you do tear it all off, sometimes the sticker juice is left on. It makes the game case stick to all other game cases around it, and then it attracts the world's hair population. You have yourself a sticky case with just a great personality. Even the tiny garage sale stickers can be a pain. They're so small and rip in half so easily when peeling them off. And who the hell ever thought it was a good idea to put stickers right on any paper included on the product? The box art, labels, this cartridge has so much plastic space, but you just had to smack the sticker right here. Why go out of your way to put stickers on the artwork itself instead of just the plastic case? I guess it's to prevent you from swapping price stickers on cases to get a better deal. But who does that? 
I got the cashier to think they were ringing up apples when they were really ringing up bananas. I just learned an easy way to get stuff on the cheap. Steal it. While peeling stickers off can be therapeutic, I have had one f of a day. I've very rarely seen any used game sellers get stickers right. That's how we get these old cartridge games with torn labels. I assume this is from stickers because if it wasn't, how the hell did it get this way? Listen, I understand some people just don't care about treating dumb plastic bullshit with respect. I get it. It's just in a condition like this, I wonder how could it have possibly accidentally gotten like this? I mean, I remember watching somebody open a game for a birthday present. They open it up and go, nice. They start peeling off the shrink wrap and they didn't realize they were also peeling off the game case itself. Happy birthday. That's like, how does this happen? How does this happen? What about this? What, did you like spill water on your game and you tried to dry it off with a saw? Each used game with a purple heart has a story to tell that'll never know, but sometimes you can make assumptions. Sometimes you get notes left in from the original owner and back in the day, places like Hollywood Video would brand their games like cattle. This is etched in there. There's no way getting around this. But hey, I now know this happened to be a rental video game. See, this is annoying, but also a part of history. I can at least look at this and go, Cool. But this is never gonna be fixed. With stickers, yeah, this is stupid, but that's where a funny neighbor who smells really bad comes to help. Goo gone, you just squirt that all over. Next person that owns this is gonna have the exact same questions I do. What the f happened here? This usually helps get rid of that sticker residue. Now don't get me wrong, I like this, but I would never drink it. It just smells too bad, I, I couldn't. But some stickers are just a bit too tough, much like the Hollywood video branding. There are some stickers that are basically permanently bonded to the plastic. This Microsoft company store purchase sticker falls under the category of neat but go away. Now this was purchased within Microsoft by a Microsoft employee who really wanted to play whacked. That's really cool. Now, why do they need an ass large sticker that's impossible to peel off? I'm trying everything I can here. To be fair, if it's just the case that's the issue, you can almost always swap it out with a better one. The problem is trying to find another one. The first thought is, oh, I'll get an old sports game. Those are in the dollar bin, nobody's buying them. I can harvest that thing for its shell. But they have their own impossible sticker to remove. Most EA Sports titles have this shiny branding that you can peel off, but it's gonna leave a lot of residue. I mean, there are other games to put out of their misery to simply use their cases, but some games, they're too far gone. Thanks, Caden. A lot of people like to label their property. Oh, some games even encourage that. Pokemon Stadium on N64 had this spot to put your name. Uh, weirdly enough, my copy of Pokemon Stadium is clean, but Kirsten just had to write on Pokemon Snap. Now for these, there are a few ways to clean them up. I like using magic erasers, dab it in a bit of water and scrub a bit if it's on plastic. Uh, many times marker comes right off. Now when it's on paper, welcome to Corp Central. This is all fairly common for used games though. Weirdly enough, a lot of secondhand game stores don't really care about cleaning their games before reselling them. Sometimes they plaster stickers all over the place, sometimes in places that could do a lot of damage, and other times they just don't even use new cases if theirs is all cracked and sad. The thing is, these stores make most of their money off of used games. New games they don't make much of a profit off of. Most of the money made from those go straight back to the publisher. Used games they just bought from some sap in the store. They can charge whatever they want for them. They can make as much of a profit off of those as they so please. So why do they do this? Yeah, no problem. That gets cleaned to void your warranty. Used games are disgusting half of the time in these stores. But even the most disgusting used game of all time doesn't even begin to compare to the worst offender of me seeing something of all time. Fuck out. So sometimes when people sell their used games, all they have is the disc. At least it makes more sense than not having the artwork but having the case. Like, oh man, I need more space. There, some people just prefer having the disc on a spindle. I can never look them in the eye, but hey, that at least makes sense. That saves an unbelievable amount of space. But of course, people who only have loose discs don't take the greatest care of them. Hey, uh, here's that game you wanted back. Uh, <laughs> I, I lost the case. Um, <laughs> I, I left the manual in Reno. Um, <laughs> I wanted to give you that back. Uh, I wanted to give you back what's rightfully yours. So when am I looking after your daughter? But for some reason, GameStop and various other stores accepted loose games like this. And where did they go? In the GameStop generic cases. They just have the game console's logo, a really off-center age rating. Oh look, it's rated E10+. And a very sloppily typed on title. Who the hell buys these? Who? 
And then for the funkier cases, stuff like the PS4, which those games don't have DVD size cases, they mold their own and they're the cheapest things imaginable. Why have that attention to detail? Why put PS4 games in these types of cases? Are the kind of people who buy games in the GameStop generic cases really the type of people who would say, this isn't the size of a normal PS4 game? I thought this was a GameStop, not a witch. Why go that extra mile if you're gonna put this in a GameStop case? I might as well just use a regular DVD one. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit on 360. This is a Wii case with a baseball sticker. Okay, you have the GameStop generic case, but you have the original artwork. How did that happen? How do you lose the case, but not the artwork? What about the old GameStop cases? Those were better and worse. Yeah, just some cartoon characters throwing gang signs. The GameCube one has a mom buying a sack for a kid and this same guy, but backwards. Let's see how many problems we can find on this. Okay, so somebody put a sticker on the spine of the artwork, tried ripping it off. This is a GameCube game in a PlayStation 2 case. They still have literally every piece of paper that was included originally for some reason. And worst of all, it's fucking geist. Eventually, the only way you can buy certain games is used. There's no being around that. Sometimes prices can be dirt cheap. Sometimes they can skyrocket above what they originally went for brand new. And if it's a brand new used game, you save $5. I just buy it new at that point. You know, the profits you can make off of used games must be incredible. I mean, look at all these wholesale lots online you can buy. F it, I don't need a house payment. I decided to buy a bunch of mystery used game lots. I have no clue what games are included. This is gonna be fun. One of my lots came with an empty jar of minced garlic. Yeah, I guess to package these games tightly in a container, the seller included minced garlic for padding. Well, let's see what we got here. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah, lots like these are basically trying to get rid of used games that have been rotting on game store shelves that would never sell on their own, so they sell them as a part of a 50 NES game lot, and they're nothing more than Boo! Oh my god, this lot came with a sealed GameCube game! That looks like ass! This is my first used brand new video game. There were some good gets in here, but most of the time you're playing with fire with these lots. Basically, I now own all the games nobody wanted to own. Now, game companies don't really like used games. They'd vastly prefer if you bought them new. That way, they make money. See, they ain't making anything off of a used game sale. That's all the game store's profit. And we've seen time and time again, companies trying to incentivize people to buy their games brand new. In the latter half of the 360 and PS3's life, there were online passes where if you you wanted to play online multiplayer, you had to input a code you got with new copies of the game. If you bought the game used, it's likely the online pass was already redeemed, so to play online multiplayer, you'd have to pay 10 bucks. Now I see a lot of launch editions, where you get bonuses for buying the game around its launch window or pre-ordering it. However, with digital games, you can't possibly trade those in. Nintendo gets all the money from you buying their games digitally. Sony doesn't have to give a cut to a retailer. Microsoft doesn't have to worry about people buying those digital games used. The war against used games will forever permeate through gaming history. And at least with digital, the companies make more money off of their products, which means they can fund even more great projects in the future or they can give their CEOs four more dollars. Digital is the way of the future. That's just where gaming's heading. And while I don't think physical games will ever leave for good, digital is definitely what most of these companies want. So while used games can be fucking disgusting, they're a part of gaming culture. And I would love to see a digital game do this. I found Dig Dug.